the vegetable medley. What is it? Uh, it's an aggregate skills test. Uh, we're looking at max Elsit, max handstand hold, max chin over bar hold, a shuttle sprint, and a max distance farmer's carry. So today we're going to get into why I picked those tests, why we're testing it, um, what relevance it has for the CrossFit athlete, and how if you're an athlete or coach, you can get some of our insider data. The fitness movement is brought to you by Zor Fitness. We offer coaching and individualized program design, as well as educational content for coaches and athletes. It's all at one place, zorfitness.com. So first of all, what is it? Uh, it's the five exercises that I mentioned, L-sit, handstand hold, tune over bar hold, shuttle run, and farmer's carry. Now, people have a 30-minute window to get uh, their best score in each of those as possible. So in other words, you can attempt each of them as many or as few times as you would like. I have them laid out in sort of the order that I would recommend people testing them in. So again, I would recommend doing L-sit first, then handstand hold, then chin over bar hold, then the shoulder run, the farmer's carry. And the reason it's in that order is just because that's like a good flow where things are more skill-based and less taxing are typically going to be the beginning, things that are more capacity-based are towards the end. So again, if you did your far farmer's carry first and then you tried to do a handstand hold, your ability to be able to balance through your fingertips um, and use your forearms to be able to do that is obviously going to be dramatically compromised because the farmer's hold uh, carry is going to be uh, obviously really taxing. It's going to be max effort. And something like that, it obviously makes sense to do that uh, towards the end or at the end. Um, and then things that are more, as I said, skill-based, uh, proprioception based, um, just, yeah, have, uh, require a little bit more finesse to do those when you are freshest. Again, I think that makes sense. You can do them whatever order you want, but that would be uh, my suggested order. Um, and people might have specific reasons as to why they might choose to do something else first, right? Um, if you are super good at handstand holding and that's super fatiguing because you have to hold for, you know, three plus minutes, maybe you choose to do that closer to the end just because it is a super fatiguing thing for you. So I, I think in most people's cases, though, it makes sense to go through in that order. Again, for all these IFS spreadsheet build out, which I'm linking to in the description here and in the show notes on the podcast, um, where uh, there is additional notes for all of this. I'm not going to be exhaustive uh, with this, but again, for something like a handstand hold, it's important that you know that, okay, we're doing this in a four by four box, so it doesn't have to be completely static. However, you can't just be walking all over the place. It has to be within that four by four foot box. Um, again, something like an L set hold, it's super helpful to know that, okay, at the top of where the you know, parallel bars or parallettes or whatever I use to be able to uh, actually have my hands on that my feet need to stay above four inches below that marker. So basically I need to put something four inches below the top of that handle and my feet can't touch that. And I also have to have another line where my heels have to go beyond it. So much like any qualifier at this point where there's standards that are in place, we have standards for these, but we just want people to make sure that they, they're not gaming it right. And they're able to you know, optimize for their best uh, score on a test that actually has some standards because that's what you're doing every single time as a CrossFit athlete. When uh, new events come out, you're having to optimize to the standards that whatever the organizers uh, deem is the, the standard of that particular movement. And it can be different for each one. So we've seen how many different handstand push-up standards. So again, we might have to modify these down the road at some point, but this allows everyone to be as consistent as possible and like basically says like, Hey, this is what an L set is for this test. So do your best to, uh, yeah. Um, you can obviously game it provided that you're actually meeting the, the, the standard that we've laid out. So I would encourage people before they do that, if they actually do the, the vegetable medley, which I'm encouraging everybody to do, if you're listening to this, uh, because it's something that like, even if you were just a general fitness athlete or if we're a CrossFit competitor, again, I think it has a lot of benefit and something that if you work to drive these up, that there will have be a lot of positive side effects of something like that, which is sort of, um, yeah, what I'm hinting at with the name. So again, they can do these in whatever they want. There will be an aggregate score. Once it actually gets spit out, there'll be a score from zero to 25. You can get up to five points on any of these tests where a, a grand total of like a 25 would be like a, a perfect score, which I'm guessing, frankly, if uh, a lot of if we had like every games athlete do this right in like my ideal world <laughs> um, that I would say most of them would probably get a perfect score or very close to a perfect score. And that's, I think, one indication that it could be a good test of, um, yeah, like a good correlate to uh, a high-level CrossFit athlete. So, 
uh, we have basically different uh, kind of segments that that lines up with, like basically a, what we would consider to be skilled, intermediate, RX, RX plus, and elite, based on the the total scores that you're getting. And another key thing for people who are trying this, I want everyone to give their best score, um, not just optimizing for like I, I want everyone to give their best effort, not optimizing for a score. So in other words, if you realize that um, this isn't accurate, but say like the handstand hold uh, a four is 47 seconds or something, right? Um, if that's the case, then don't just try to hold until you get past 45 or well, 47 seconds and then drop down if you think you can't hold to the next one. Do your best effort, even if that's 58 seconds. That doesn't correlate to any positive benefit on the, the score, so to speak. We're going to use this as not only comparative data against other athletes, but also against yourself down the road, right? It's a very easy test retest thing to do. So likely we'll have a lot of our athletes that we work with do this maybe like in a, like an onboarding type testing period. And then again, down the line at some point, it probably makes sense to, to revisit this. So we'll all obviously be able to test and retest against your own score. So it's important that you've not just optimized for the score, but you've given your best effort on each of these tests. So hang on, try your best on like a farmer's carry, even if you realize that you're not going to make it to the next tier. Um, yeah, do your best. And then uh, there's also going to be a form where you submit your raw score. In other words, Again, if you held your handstand hold for 47 seconds, you're going to be putting 47 into that box. The reason being is that we're going to have that exported into a spreadsheet on the back end where I can actually see and our other coaches can see. We can pull a lot of, uh, we can basically groom that data how we want to and like manipulate the cells around, find averages, find um, and normative data, all kinds of things off of that. And that's obviously going to be super beneficial for our coaches that we can then uh, help under athletes understand where they can actually improve upon and like where they're acceptable, like, and maybe out of bounds in other areas. So that w will obviously be helpful. But then again, if you're someone who's doing this, if you're one of our athletes, we're going to be completely transparent and tell you everything. And again, even if you are someone who's just listening to this and you want to be uh, informed and kind of know, and you're curious about how things shake out, um, I will share data with you. I will let you know where you're, where you're at in that. And that way, I'll be transparent in terms of like where I think you're currently at and like what areas that you could uh, be benefited from kind of putting additional work into. And again, we're using those raw scores because if we, rather than just saying like, okay, we're going to put uh, your four out of five handstand hold uh, into there. The reason that we're not doing that is because realistically it's something like an LSIT comes out in 2025 and all of a sudden everyone spends in the, the whole 2025 season getting really good at LSATs or an LSAT variation of some kind, right? And and they optimize for that and they get really good at that. All of a sudden, the baseline of terms of like uh, the fitness that you need in that area and even how it compares to everybody in the field is all of a sudden going to be elevated dramatically. So that's one thing. But then also the, the field just continues to get better over time. So like, you know, I'm sure the average you know, a, a standard deviation below what is acceptable, so to speak, for a handstand hold in 2017 is a whole lot different than it is in 2023 or 2024. So that's why we're getting raw scores is so that we can adjust those uh, score tables in terms of like the, the points that are assigned to them over time. So that is the vegetable skill medley. Um, I think one of the questions I'm going to get a lot is where did the name come from? So I actually stole this from Jeff Baltimore. At the time, he was programming for 1440 Athletics right near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, this is what Jeff had to say about it. At 1440, we have like our regular general programming, like our day-to-day -day class programming. We have like some extras programming. The main pieces are like double under pieces. That always seems to be a skill people want to get good at. There's an Olympic lifting piece. So snatch, clean, jerk. And there's also vegetables. So I call them vegetables because it's like the stuff you don't really want to do, but it's like, you got to do like your vegetables. You don't really want to <laughs> eat them. <laughs> yeah. You don't really want to eat them, but you know, you got to. So there's like strength based vegetables, skill based and conditioning based. So that idea really stuck with me. And when I opened Lumber Capital Athletics, this was probably two, three years after the, the interview at this point, but I just kind of had that sticking in my mind and I always wanted to somehow incorporate it. And so every single week that we've been open, I've had veggies vegetables attached to the weekly programming. So basically it was like Monday through Saturday, we're closed on Sunday, but there's vegetables uh, on that time. And again, it's always like accumulate as you see fit. And then there's just like this list of items. So for example, accumulate one minute L set, 50 banded face pulls, a hundred banded hamstring curls and 2K of rowing, right? That might be a very typical week. So you can go through them however you want, 
And again, it's gonna be stuff that almost the more you do, it's only gonna be more beneficial, right? If you do more joint health, if you do more positional work, if you do more mobility work, more easier aerobic conditioning, that's only going to elevate all other aspects of your fitness uh, to a very high extent, right? Like it would be very hard to overdo that, very much like vegetables, right? Like the more you eat, generally that's really healthy for you and it's only gonna have benefits and there's very, very little downside to that, right? up to a certain very high threshold, which almost no one is ever going to reach. So um, that's why I always have written vegetables for Lumber Capital. And uh, it's also why in this case that it's becoming a vegetable medley because the more of these types of movements that you're doing, they're not only great correlates with the sport, but they're also a great way to be healthy, well-rounded athletes, which is ultimately what we're looking for. Now, the medley part of it is not only like a, a kind of a play on words, obviously, but Bosman, Adrian Bosman, the director of the games currently, um, is <laughs> loves for whatever reason calling things medley. So there's always like a skill medley of some kind. So um, again, these things are often skill, like they're they're kind of these quick, easy tests, and it's an aggregate score. So it makes sense that it's a medley. So there you have it, the vegetable medley. So why these tests? Well, I actually think that again, as I said, that these are a, a good correlate for sport markers. CrossFit as a sport, but then also I think it goes back to CrossFit's kind of general 10 components of fitness, like the 10 general skills. Like I think if you are really good at these tests, it shows that you have uh, certain aspects of strength that are well developed, of stamina, of balance, um, you know, agility, flexibility, right? Even think about like holding an L sit, power development. Um, I think it has aspects of each one of those. So obviously those are good to test for a number of reasons. But I, I also think that this is a good test because this is the type of thing that is a great KPI, uh, key performance indicator of bottlenecked CrossFit workouts and basically your ability or your potential to express skills in the sport of CrossFit. So let's think about each one of these and how it could be a KPI for, uh, again, bottlenecked CrossFit workouts. Um, so things that are, are limited other than just like raw capacity, uh, raw power output, raw strength. So let's think about the L sit, right? Your ability to have obviously core strength and put trunk flexion. Trunk flexion has been tested a lot in some workouts like that's, that is the limiter, right? That's the thing that they want to test. Um, there's been plenty of quarterfinal workouts where like GHD or toes to bar volume, which is just the thing that slows people down or limits them. And then not only that, but being able to create that shape and hold that shape while the posterior is being uh, on stretch. So basically, do you have the position? Do you have the mobility in the posterior chain in that entire tissue to be able to create the shape needed? If we think about a handstand hold, obviously the overhead position is huge in CrossFit from you know the amount of things that you do in hanging gymnastics where your hands are over your head, or if you think about just the amount of overhead barbell work or inversion work like handstand pushups, handstand walks, all of those things, even wall walks, all of that is going to be hugely important. So not only being able to press out and lock out, um, but be able to have the, the skill of that, um, yeah, like in the handstand itself, and then to be able to maintain that lockout and have the endurance of that if you're someone who has uh, the balance aspect mastered. So again, that something like that handstand hold, for some people, it's going to be completely skill limited. Uh, other people, it's going to be more pressing endurance uh, testing. And again, I think with something like a bottleneck crossfit workout if it is something that is again that overhead position limited it's going to be different for different athletes like some people might be skill limited other people the skill breaks down as they get super fatigued so um, again i think that can change and morph as the athlete's ability level changes and morphs which is makes it uh, in my opinion a good test the chin over bar hold not only is it easy you need minimal warm-up but it's a really quick snapshot of uh pulling stamina right if you are someone who can do that for well over a minute. That's a much better sign that you have um, the stamina through, again, I would call this like local muscular endurance, uh, like or even strength endurance through like lats, biceps, uh, grip. Uh, yeah, mainly lats and biceps. So to be able to continue to, to hold that. For something like the shuttle run, again, we haven't seen a lot of spring tested be uh, like below the games, frankly, like we haven't really, really seen it truly, like even at a semifinal level. So to be able to create high levels of force and produce a lot of joint velocity throughout a big range of motion, like the entire, you know, multiple joints being used is 
you know, super indicative of being able to do things like high box jumps, where if you were limited by that, it's just gonna be like kind of staring at the box, like wishing you could jump higher, or like we're feeling more athletic, right? So again, I think in that way, it's low barrier to entry where everybody can run a 200 foot shoulder run at a max effort. However, that the scores on that can be uh, pretty dramatic if we look at it from a percentage of uh, like total time. So basically looking at rate of force development and overall explosiveness. Uh, something like other plyometrics that can be tested in CrossFit. And then the farmers carry grip limitations. So like how often do we see grip limited workouts in, you know, like a quarterfinals type uh, online qualifier testing body? It's it's hugely important. So again, I think if nothing else, just looking at grip endurance is a, a great, uh, another great KPI. So there you have it, the vegetable medley. Uh, we have a demo video that kind of explains all this in, in detail. We also have the standards and scoring spreadsheet a link to that and show notes in the description below. We also have a form again to submit your scores. So I'd encourage everybody listening to do this skill test. Uh, it's simple. And again, it's going to be a great correlation to a lot of different qualities, whether you're competitive or not. Again, I'll link to that form. So make sure you submit your scores. And if you do that, I will respond um, and make sure that I am actually going to give you some, uh, again, comparative data on how you did relative to other people who are in a similar boat uh, to you, whether that's gender, age, a couple of different demographics. So again, submit your stuff. I will get it back to you. So best of luck, everybody. Let me know if you've got any questions. And that is the vegetable medley. Thanks for listening today. If you're someone who just started listening to the show, I would encourage you to subscribe so you can stay up to date. If you're someone who's been listening for a while, I would encourage you to rate and review the show. And lastly, the best thing that you can do to support our work is also the best thing that you can do for your performance. And that is by hiring one of our coaches. Until next time, stay the course.